Last times we researched our first two blue technologies from some carefully prepared stockpiles, without actually supplying blue science with the odd 20 or so belts of resource intake it truly needs. First, advanced oil processing halved the oil problem, so that we are now producing half of the oil we need, instead of half of half. And the combination of the newly researched electric furnaces with the Pseudo Mark II efficiency modules has allowed us to finally properly supply blue science with all the resources it needs, without adding the tons of pollution steel furnaces would have deposited right on top of our already dangerously large pollution cloud. We are finally producing all three science packs required to get our bottoms off of this planet at 1000 science per minute. Now we just need to blaze our way through the remaining 3 million science packs worth of research at the blistering speed of what is basically the default settings equivalent of 1 science per minute. 50 hours of research while already having the entire base built up? That sounds like we can finally start taking it easy. But the opposite is true. We have managed to keep the pollution cloud within our territory for quite a long time. But now, despite literally going for all of the pollution reducing technologies straight after the great 90 hour biter war, the pollution cloud has ruthlessly expanded nevertheless. And all of a sudden, we are now, on multiple fronts, quite close to angering indestructible godlike behemoth biters into unstoppable attacks on our base. Despite waiting for the lean clean electric furnaces to negate most of the blue science pollution problem, with the massive resource devouring blue science now running at full speed towards construction robots and ultimately the rocket silo, the sick center fat pollution cloud has started to burst over our chest high walls. And if we don't make some quick management level policy changes, it will soon be the behemoth biters who are running the show around here. While most of the pollution problem originates from the bloated center blob that is my base, our very first oil field is situated pretty close to the most threatening edge of the pollution cloud. And while we have been producing oil as hard as we can since the day we invented the pump jack, the added speed modules double the already significant pump jack pollution to 20 a minute per pump jack. So despite us producing barely half the oil that we really need to run blue signs, we swap out the speed modules for efficiency modules. which anti-decimates the local pollution of 260 a minute down to just 26. Fortunately, the other three oil fields are located outside the big pollution blob, and due to the location they are currently not threatening to pollute any biters, which means the other three oil fields can keep their polluting speed modules, for now. But since the original oil field was our best oil field as well, we still take a significant hit to our overall oil production. We are now producing only 13k a minute, and the 18k a minute production deficit is now eating through most of a storage tank every minute. No time to worry about that now though, oil production will decrease to 0k per minute if the biters decide to pay us a visit. We gotta keep reducing pollution like a madman. Gone is the quality plastic. Gone is the quality coal mine. Uh, I said be gone quality modules. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I had kinda hoped I could have delayed doing the module dance until after I finished researching construction bots. Because hand swapping out modules and mining drills is even more annoying than building set mining drills. In fact, it is so annoying I decide to risk losing the entire playthrough to Behemoth Biter attacks by postponing any and all other module swapping until we can delegate the task to our future robotic friends. 
Efficiency modeling the southern coal mine and southern oil field will hopefully alleviate enough pollution pressure from the most dangerous pollution front for us to pull through to reach construction bots. In the meantime, we can draw this pipeline past these four medium johnnies here. And connect this juicy new untapped double oil field. That's over 3300% new oil, all beautifully speed modeled up. And all of a sudden we went from under producing 18k oil a minute to over producing 14k a minute. And thanks to these expensive quality pump jacks, which we got second hand by the way from the now fully depleted old northern oil fields where their job was done, the new oil field will hopefully replenish some of our losses before it too shall diminish away into infinite drops per second. And pretty soon we're going to need to spend even more oil on making all three ingredients for rocket parts. Until now, we have just been enjoying the 16 slot inventory bonus of our rare modular armor. But now with construction bots and the personal roboport on the horizon, we need to start thinking about actually putting stuff into the armor's equipment grid. Which, thanks to the rare quality, is the size of the OG power armor. A full armor class above its usual pay grade. It's still over two hours until the research beeline for our robotic friends will be completed, but if our quest for quality basic resources has paid off, we will be able to fill the full equipment grid with rare quality components easily. With bot frames being among the most complicated recipes in the game though, it's going to be a time consuming process to pull off the entire production chain in rare quality format. We are starting out by role-playing as a legendary logistic bot. Finally bringing some order into the quality chaos by hand hauling heaps of stuff across the base and setting up a nice new hand sorted chest array south of our assembler area, which will for the foreseeable future house all the quality components we managed to collect throughout the base. Nice. The quality red chip area has amassed a good amount of uncommon and rare quality red and green chips, as well as plastics and copper cables so we can balance out the red and green chip amounts if we need to. The quality engine area has done a similar job for engines and its subcomponents. And we certainly have more than enough rare engines to start the process of making rare construction bots directly from rare ingredients. And them being of rare quality specifically is going to play a huge role in the near future thanks to a... well, not really exploit. Let's call it an exploitable feature that is so powerful it just might get patched. And that's really why I'm 6 months ahead in my playthrough. <laughs> Anyway, rare steel is still a rare commodity and it remains to be seen if we have enough on hand to make all the steel intensive personal bots and armor equipment. We might have to smelt some of our more abundant rare iron directly into rare steel. We perhaps don't have as many uncommon copper and iron plates lying around as you might expect. But remember, we have been gambling away all of those into a tiny chance to make rare mining drills since the beginning of time. And while we recently have succeeded into replacing every last mining drill on the planet for a rare one, we now possess 16,000 of the useless uncommon mining drills. We also possess a ghost 
chest. Ooh, wait, uh, we put down the image of a, for now, unobtainable requester chest, where we have neatly organized the inventory equipment we want in our armor for now. Do you see anything that is uh, slightly over-optimistic, perhaps, or even completely missing? Anyway, bot frames are researched by now, so we go ahead and make the rare quality electric engines from mechanical engines. Using rare productivity modules to squeeze out as many free extras as we can from these hyper expensive rare quality ingredients. Same story for the rare quality batteries required for bot frames. And soon we can combine those electric engines and batteries with even more rare green chips and steel to make the bot frames. Again, with extra productivity, which should net us a net 28 bot frames from 25 sets of ingredients. And yeah, I unironically think it's a blessing that the devs have hidden epic quality and beyond behind interplanetary technology far outside of our reach. We would be susceptible to grinding ourselves into a corner without ever making any progress, stuck in an endless loop trying to get legendary equipment. Bot frames take quite a while to craft, but we still need to make 15 rare portable solar panels. I was planning to pay a visit to Johnny's solar shop, but man, those guys have been seriously slacking and have only produced two rare solar panels all game. Insulted, playing Mike doesn't even bother and he just makes all 15 rare solar panels from scratch. They turn out to be quite heavy though, so logically he slaps yet another pair of steel girders on them to make them more portable. The bot frames are soon done, and we combine them with even more rare quality green chips to make 150 rare quality personal construction bots. But why that many? A Mark 1 personal roboport houses 10 bots only, and trying to keep them charged with just portable solar panels and personal batteries is a Sisyphean task. Well, that's a medium sized story involving a shiny new exploit, double feature of intended behavior, that I'll discuss in a separate video. Link in pinned comment if it's finished by now. For the time being, it's of lesser importance, and at this point in the playthrough, I had just started to discover the rudimentary basics of what is possible to achieve with rare construction bots. More on that in a future episode. Next time.